Hey everyone, this is some video, this time I'm doing something very different from the personal finance or investing world out there. It's nothing to do with finance or investing. This, this particular video is something that I, I thought I should do because this is something that I get often asked about how to find your passion. Uh, or even if you are able to find your passion, how to make it your profession or a vocation and um, you know how to live life in such a way that you get to do every day what you love to do and still make money out of it and um, still make wealth out of it right and uh, leading a good life. So uh, I thought I should do this video because these are some of the things that I that helped me identify my passion and how I could convert it into a profession for the rest of my life uh, because once you find your passion you know you don't have to retire at all that's a beauty of it and uh, if you get to do every day uh, if it's not physically related it's amazing so I thought I should do this video and what are some of the steps you can follow and uh, make I made it like a presentation so that it helps if at all it helps some people out there so the first step out there is to find an area of interest uh, you know whether you have a competence or not that doesn't matter but finding an area of interest something that excites you now here are five points that you need to uh, you can look at evaluating identifying uh, what that area of interest is right uh, or the core competences so some of the hidden tips are how to find it uh, tip number one engage in engaging in activities that puts you into a flow state which means you get so involved in doing that activity that you forget the external environment, right? There's a famous book out there written by um, Mikhail. Uh, you know, it's on the flow state, how to get into flow state and all of that. A wonderful book. Uh, you know, it talks about a level of happiness which is correlated with uh, being in the flow state, right? Um, so, uh, you know, some engaging in something that makes you forget everything around. Uh, that is something uh, associated closely with, uh, you know, the tip is that it's something that's closely associated with uh, your passion. So that is the first tip. Second one, things that you are naturally good at and you enjoy repeating that performance day in day out without getting bored. So there are certain things that makes people uh, love it. You know, the reason for loving that is it could be because you are really good at it. You know, if somebody is good at, uh, you know, for example, cooking, uh, it comes naturally to them. And, you know, by learning more and more, they feel like learning more and more. Tasks or work that you can perform, uh, third tip is task or work that you can perform even if you're not paid for it, you know, um, you know, if you're not paid for forever, you're okay with that, but you love doing that day in day out. Uh, so it's not uh, expecting any outcome, it's not expecting any uh, wealth out of it or money out of it, but you love doing it day in day out. So that could be another tip you know look at things that can uh, you know keep you going without getting paid for it or without any outcome with without any reward without any price without any appreciation you don't care about appreciation you do it you know because you love it you know that's a inner scorecard concept by warren Buffett, which i'll do a different video on the fourth thing is you stress as against stressed out there's something called as you stress it's a positive way of a positive cause of stress right a positive outcome of stress so uh, it excites you it creates kind of a excitement it kinds of a, a bit of anxiety though but it is in a positive way it makes you feel excited it expands you uh, you know whenever it expands you before doing an activity and you want to you feel excited it takes you to a higher level it is you stress and uh, rather than getting stressed out if you do work that you're not interested in that you're not getting excited around uh, that could cause stress but you stress is opposite of that antonym of that so that's fourth tip fifth is things that gives you energy than uh, draining out energy from you right so uh, only when uh, you are gaining uh, when you are uh, getting energy when you are uh, giving energy into an activity it can show in the result it can help you sustain it for long term especially when you have to sustain your passion for long term you need to see that you give energy you're gaining energy and you're giving energy back to it right it's not draining your energy out which can cause stress which can cause boredom which can cause um, not 100 percent commitment into the activity so look for all all these tips and hidden factors that can help you identify the passion the step two once we find the passion the step two is to find uh, a mentor one or two mentors uh, who can coaches coach us uh, directly or indirectly it could be through their uh, books it could be through the men the videos that the mentors made it could be through the lectures they did in colleges it could be the uh, it could be the journals it could be anything or it could be the 
physical presence if possible that's even better so uh, we need to find the mentors like couple of them uh, you know that is suitable to the stage where we are now look it's very important to find the mentor based on the stage where we are in it could be like a, for, as a beginner I might need mentorship from a different level of expertise and then at a different stage as I mature and uh, reach a level of after some stages of learning curve I might need mentorship in a different aspect uh, you know it might not be subject oriented it could be uh, uh, you know behavioral oriented it could be um, you know the approach oriented it could be different types of mentorship we would need uh, at different stages of our uh, passionate career right so uh, finding the right set of mentors is important and it's not just one it could be many because we can always look at you know plugging in different aspects from different mentorship the next step is step three which is uh, read books watch videos and learn everything you can uh, by taking notes it's very important to take notes uh, in especially in today's world of uh, media most people don't take notes they listen to it and see the human mind is very susceptible uh, it has a very short memory span it has a very short attention span the things we think uh, during our creative minds can even be forgotten within an hour or two if we don't note that so it's a good idea to have a couple of journals uh, where one could be to, to uh, note down your thoughts to note down uh, the creative process that is happening in the minds um, so that that goes into a different book uh, journal uh, the other aspect is to maintain a different books to whatever we are learning from uh, whether it is from our mentors or from our experiences especially you know in my kind of field where it is investing uh, it's a it's a very important thing to note down different uh, patterns different uh, uh, you know historical data relevances and whatever learnings I had uh, unless otherwise I write it down and keep referring on and on and again it, it just gets out of the mind so out of my out of uh, sight is out of mind right so it's a good idea to keep that handy and it could be a good reference point in the future so it's very important to have handwritten notes uh, that we can correlate to that we can refer to in the future uh, whether it is uh, to two parts to it one is to note down our own thought process because we when we when it's our passion uh, we tend to be always living in that you know for example i eat i sleep i drink uh, markets all the time so i tend to have many thought process many ideas uh, which i immediately noted down when i go for a walk I get an idea note it down in the book right um, that is important at the same time you maintain another book which is to record your learnings or experiences another book to record the experience and teachings from the mentors so it's a good idea to have handwritten notes so that is an important point now why it is important is because it Im helps us to uh, improve daily where we stand uh, it helps us to benchmark and it helps us to improve daily one percentage see compounding works everywhere uh, when it is reading books whether it is learning from mentors whether it is learning from experiences it's all compounding it is a time that rules the world in the world of compounding right so uh, the famous book atomic habits written by james clear is predicated on the concept of compounding not only money and wealth uh, you know compounding happens to the experiences compounding happens when we read in the knowledge in accumulating uh, experience his mental models all of that so he had given this great uh, beautiful chart you know one percentage better every day can compound and become you know the difference it has it attributes in a year is almost 37 times you become better than where you started if you compound one person every day over a year's period but then where we started you know without any improvement so continuous improvement continuous learning uh, through videos books that is a step three and um, step four okay so all this is great you found your passion suppose you found your area of competence which you are naturally good at or whatever you would found your mentor you're progressing with the mentorship now you are learning through videos uh, teachings uh, you know noted, taking down notes and all of that but those things are not going to feed a family right we need some income we need sources of income so we cannot just quit our job and switch on to the passionate field like saying like you know this is my passion tomorrow onwards i'm going to do this so how do we get there you know so the idea is to find a service orientation around the passion that you are doing going to do uh, so it could be services that could be helpful for other people that can help other people come up in their life it could be relating to your field it, if you are say a sports coach if you are doing the coaching it can help other future kids to come up it is a great area that you can start a service around um, suppose if you want to if you wanted always to play a, a football game or a soccer game uh, but you couldn't due to whatever physical attributes it is uh, you can start still maintain that passion and start a field 
you know with a periphery around that passion uh, there are many peripheral services that can still be utilized uh, and you can retain that as your passion and eventually a profession right so uh, it could be services around that it could be products around that it could be uh, you know attires costumes around that it could be jerseys it could be uh, you know materials that you can publish it could be books around that so there are so many peripheral services that you can start as a side hustle now keep your main job keep the main income i would do this i would start a main uh, parallel side hustle around my passion and identify continue to improve on my that chosen field and then slowly start developing uh, you know peripheral service or core services that can help other people with my services or my products uh, or my business ventures right and start uh, you know deploying certain hours from that week in addition to your main income main job put at least 20 hours 15 hours in a week into that side hustle or the passion of yours start developing services around that a product around that or business around that but at the same time keep improving on the core of your passion the core is the craft improve the craft daily one person improve every day whatever person is improved every day but improving the craft but developing the services in and around that that can eventually become a income source for you or a wealth source for you um, so that is the idea so the side hustle can or the side uh, work that you're putting in to develop your passion and services or business around it might take time it could be two years three years four years ten years away but if you continuously do that uh, there would at some point of time there would be a stage where your side hustle would earn uh, maybe half or one third of what you're earning today which could sufficiently meet your demands and that is good enough it's a good indication it is a good inflection point to determine that okay this is working in the right direction now i can give more effort more uh, towards that and eventually i'm sure it should work in your way to become your main job or main source of income uh, it's it wouldn't no longer be a job it's your passion it's your work uh, you can live that every day so that is um, that is a uh, you know path i would take i mean that that's what i did and it worked over a 10 year 12 year period now uh, some people it could work earlier some people could take time but this is the path you know having a parallel path of enhancing the services around your core passion is important at the same time improving the passion itself you know uh, continuously so uh, Charlie Munger said it beautifully, you know, be a continuous learner. It, it, if you apply stage steps one to four, we can be continuous learners. We can cho choose a field and become uh, better at it every day and continuously improve. Uh, improve the craft, improve the services, improve the skills and eventually we uh, get to live uh, the concept of finer. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of fire principle, you know, fire, financial independence, retire early. I don't believe in retiring early. If it's your passion, you will never ever retire in your life. So I believe in the concept of finer, which is fine financial independence never ever retire uh, just like we see you know people who follow their passion they just continue to do that for the rest of their life so which is important and you can have different passions at different points of time again now it's not just one thing uh, there are people who uh, starts a completely different line of uh, business or different line of philanthropy there are different things that people take at different stages of life so it's not that you have to marry towards one thing but this kind of an approach of framework helps us identify that passion. Just wanted to bring this up. Trust this was helpful. Sign, signing off, Sandeep Anand.